Okay, so we'll start not to get late uh, right away. So welcome to everybody. I thought the room would be much more crowded than it, what it is, so people are still in a kind of COVID mode, I guess. So this workshop marks the end of my one year stint at Collège de France. And I deeply thank the Betancourt Foundation uh, and my friends and colleagues at Collège de France for granting me the honor to hold the Chaire de l'Innovation in 2020. Well, actually with COVID, my lectures entitled From Statistical Physics to Social Sciences in fact took place in 2021, but we decided to wait yet another year uh, to hold this workshop, which traditionally ends the formal lectures. So welcome to More is Different, which I wanted to be both a tribute to Phil Anderson and his eponym exactly 50-year-old 1972 paper, which impressed and influenced so many people, including myself, and also, I wanted the, this workshop to be a testimony of what I tried to convey in my lectures, the importance of emergent collective effects and the importance of multidisciplinarity, hence the motley crowd of speakers that I'm really proud to have gathered here today and tomorrow, physicists, mathematicians, biologists, economists, computer scientists. A few words, so let me just show you the... So this is actually the little book of my inaugural lecture here in 2021. So a few words about Phil Anderson, who died in March 2020, just after this workshop was initially decided. Although less well known by the general public than scientific giants of the 20th century like uh, Einstein, Feynman, Turing and many others, Phil Anderson was a wizard, a visionary, a true intellectual hero. He has influenced my way of doing and thinking about science ever since I started my PhD and discovered one of his main claims to fame, Anderson's localization, which led at least in part to his 1977 Nobel Prize. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that he could have won at least two other Nobel Prizes, one for the Josephson effect and one for the Higgs boson, also called the Anderson-Higgs mechanism. For those who want to know more about the scientific contributions and personal life of Phil Anderson, I strongly recommend this book, um, a very recent co called um, A Mind Over Matter, from which I borrowed some of the material below. The breadth of his scientific interests was truly amazing. In a debate with particle physicist Steven Weinberg in 1991, he listed some of the topics he thought about. How did life begin? How does the brain work? What is the theory of the immune system? Is there a science of economics? All these themes you will have noticed being clearly related to the present workshop. But he went on to say along the lines of, he was already arguing in more is different in 72, all these things have in common, the, the subject I quoted, uh, have in common, common that are, they are manifestations not of the elementary constituents of matter, but of the complex organization of that matter. One of his constant fight was to show that understanding complex organizations was as fundamental as understanding the elementary laws and constituents. In fact, he argued against the idea that a deep understanding of the building bricks could help understanding questions at the aggregate level. He wrote, the ability to reduce everything to simple fundamental laws does not imply the ability to start with these laws and reconstruct the universe. In More is Different, he introduces an even deeper idea, which strongly resonates with my own enthusiasm for complex systems, that of emerging surprises. The behavior of large assemblies of interacting individuals, actually he writes particles in the paper, cannot be understood as a simple extrapolation of the properties of isolated individuals. Instead, entirely new, unanticipated behaviors may appear and their understanding requires new ideas and methods. Although Anderson was not aware of it, this idea of emergence was stated in almost the same terms 50 years before by English philosopher C.D. Broad. Emergence is the fact that the whole cannot be deduced from the most complete knowledge of its components. There is perhaps an even inter more interesting twist to the idea, in particular in the context of social sciences and economics. Anderson offered a specific mechanism capable of producing emergence, i.e. unforeseen, sometimes unimaginable aggregate properties, the mechanism of symmetry breaking in a broad sense, which leads to different microscopic phases 
i.e. regions of the parameter space where aggregate behavior is qualitatively the same, but markedly different from the behavior in other regions of the parameter space, like in this phase diagram. Think of liquid water and ice as arch examples. But here's the twist. Not only emerging properties cannot be predicted from elementary building blocks, the same aggregate macroscopic properties appear for a wide range of elementary micro-constituents. Only a handful of crucial micro-properties seem to matter. The rest disappears upon aggregation, which can only produce a few types of micro-properties. This is actually good news for modeling. One does not need to nail down the exact behavior of individual molecules, of individual neurons, of individual economic agents to reproduce the qualitative behavior of the very many. Only a rough sketch of these elementary ingredients may suffice while still generating surprising features at the macro level and allowing the modeler to think about these collective effects in a simple way. Phil Anderson was, also, was of course confident that such ideas could be relevant for economic sciences when he accepted to co-organize the first econophysics meetings at the Santa Fe Institute in 1987, although the name econophysics was not yet minted. The title of the meeting was telling, the, the economy is a complex evolving system. Although this was the first of a series of three, with lots of great new ideas put forward, I think it has up to now uh, too little influence on mainstream economics. Although things are slowly moving forward, I've heard several economists say, been there, done that, all this complexity thing is a hype. I, together with many others, some in the room, some like Alan Kerman, disagree. I think the best contributions of complex systems to economic and social sciences are yet to come. At least this was my hope when I gave my lectures here at Collège de France, and it is again my hope uh, gathering here for two days among the most brilliant minds working on these topics. Maybe what was missing in the 90s was a deeper in involvement of physicists in this endeavor. It won't do to just say, look at these ideas, great stuff, they should help you solving your problems. Instead, true long-term multidisciplinary projects, workshops, summer schools, collaborations are needed. Perhaps the discovery of high temperature superconductivity in 1986 is to, to some extent responsible for the relative failure of such a collaboration. This might sound strange, but it so happened that Phil Anderson was so excited about high temperature te uh, superconductivity and was so convinced that he had found the right explanation, so this is the first page of his paper published a few weeks only after the discovery, uh, that he just let go the Santa Fe project. If he had stayed involved longer, I'm quite certain that he would have yet again invented a simple but far-reaching toy model, probably luring a much larger number of theoretical physicists into these topics. Enough said, let me now open the workshop with the first uh, session. So two physicists, Jim Setna and Bill Bialek, speaking about uh, models, what is modeling. And with that, I leave the floor to Jim Setna, who unfortunately couldn't make it physically, but with the uh, wizardry of technology now, we can still listen to him. Thank you very much for being here.